I've been asked variations of this question again and again and again, and I don't have a specific person's question that I'm answering today. Uh, instead, I'm just answering, how do you write a sales letter from start to finish? Today is Monday, which means it's Mailbox Monday. It's the day where I answer your questions about copywriting, marketing, business building, entrepreneurship, and more. I'm Roy Fur. This is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets, and we have a lot to cover. We have a lot of ground, so let's dive into how to write a sales letter start to finish. These are the proven direct response marketing, copywriting, and entrepreneurship success strategies you can use today to write your own ticket and create the life you want. I am Roy Fur, and this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Now, here's today's breakthrough. All right, before we dive in, today's episode is sponsored by me, as always, and I want you to check the link in the description to High Velocity Copywriting. Inside High Velocity Copywriting, I actually have three separate templates based on the three big idea types and pretty much every million dollar plus sales letter that's ever been written fits under one of these three big idea types types. And so you'll want to check it out. Once you've decided your big idea type, you'll have an entire structure for your sales letter ready to go. That link is in the description. It's high velocity copywriting. It's part of my BTMS Insiders training library. All right. So first off, I want to give this high level process overview because we're going to get, we're going to go through 12 steps in the whole process of writing a sales letter. Uh, so first step is the client onboarding process. Next step is the research and, and big idea. Uh, third step is draft the big idea, the lead. The fourth step is to review the big idea, the lead. The fifth step is to draft the pitch. The sixth step is to draft the offer. The seventh step is to do a full copy review. The eighth step is to edit the full copy. The ninth step is to draft the supporting copy. The 10th step is the review and edits of the supporting copy. The 11th step is production and launch. And then the 12th step, all important step is optimization once you've launched. So I know I went through those pretty quick, but let's dive into each step one by one. First things first is the copywriter client onboarding process. This is this is where you get all the details of the project, including things like the offer information and um, information about the company, about the person behind the, the offer. It's where you just gather all the information plus things that you might need to know about what particular pieces of copy are going to be written, et cetera. In fact, I did a whole training where I shared my questionnaire for the copywriter client onboarding process where, and, and I taught you how to use this, number one, to help close clients, and number two, to uh, get all the information at the beginning of a project. And having a, a process in place for this is great because as the copywriter, you want to get as much useful information as possible at the beginning of the project so that you don't have to keep going back to the client like, oh, I need this information. How many days was your uh, your guarantee uh, for? Or you know, what is the price again of this offer? Or what are the bonuses that we have included? Or what pieces of copy did you need again? All of those things you don't want to have to go back over and over again. And so I figured out it's smart to have it be a process from the beginning, this copywriter client onboarding. Now, most people, you know, don't think that that's actually the start of writing copy, but it really is an important start. Uh, and then you get into step two, the, the sales letter research and the big idea. So typically for me, this starts with a client call uh, with whoever is really the expert on the product, the service, whatever it is. And we just have a conversation. I figure out their story. I figure out what they see as like the benefits of the product. I just want to get as much information out of them as possible. And it, it's an interview that goes deep. It's usually 60 minutes or more long. And then after that call, I go deep into research. And really, like people ask, how do you do research? I Google. Like I just get curious and I start searching for things around the, the, the product, the service, whatever it is. I am looking for things that would uh, that would match with like the 26 different proof elements and, and believability and credibility elements that I put into my proof credibility and believability training that's at BTMS Insiders. 
Uh, but basically I'm looking for, for like any kind of information around the product, about the product, around the market. Like I'm looking just to gather as much interesting, compelling stuff as possible that I don't even know how it's all going to fit together or what I'm going to use yet, but I'm just gathering as much information as possible. If it's an information product, uh, a knowledge product, a course, et cetera, I'm going to dive into that as well, and I'm going to gather as much research as I can out of that. And it really is a very dynamic process, and I can't necessarily tell you exactly what I'm going to do. And also, by the way, this is not the stop of, this is not the end of my research. Oftentimes I'm doing more research afterwards, but I'm, I'm just diving in and I'm getting as much information as possible. I'm taking notes. And at some point, usually what's going to happen is something that fits with the three big idea types that I teach in high velocity copywriting, something that fits with one of those big idea types is going to click. And I'm going to, I'm going to say, oh, that, that's something for me to grab onto. And from there, um, then I'm going to look for more and more to support that or to provide a new angle on that or whatever. But I'm just looking for that aha moment. I'm looking for inspiration about what the heck I'm going to open my message with that is going to be exciting to me to write and hopefully then also exciting to the reader, the prospect to read. And then once I've had that aha moment, I start drafting the sales letters, big idea and lead. And usually I want to do this as quick as possible. It's, it's usually just like 500 to 1500 words copy, assuming that the eventual sales letter is going to be somewhere in the six to 10,000 range. Uh, but we're looking for, uh, we're looking for the hook, the, the lead, the headline, the deck copy. We're looking for whatever it's going to take to grab the attention of my target audience, let them know that it's for them, convey a benefit and stimulate a little bit of curiosity that pulls them into the copy. Essentially, all I'm looking to do with this first piece of copy is make the attention and readership sale. I'm trying to get them to agree. I want to pay attention to this. I'm going to read it. Or if it's like a video sales letter, I'm going to engage with the video. And this is usually going to come from some kind of big promise. There's going to be a conveyed big promise. Either uh, it, it, there's, there's a negative scenario and that could be a current problem or it could be a, a missing um, a, a missing fulfillment of a desire that someone has, but it's this negative situation and we're going to move them towards a positive situation. So the big promise is this, the promise of movement from negative to positive. And also usually when I write this, this uh, first part, this, when I'm drafting the big idea and the lead, I am looking to outline the remainder of the pitch. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do everything that I can to make sure that I have a good idea of where I'm gonna go from here all the way up to the point where I'm going to make the offer for the product. And you know, for this outline, I'm gonna loop in the things that are like the proof elements and I'm going to give a sense of direction for where the message is gonna go. It's usually very rough, but it at least gives me an idea and gives the client an idea of where we're going from here. And then I send it to the client to the review for the sales letter, big idea and lead review. And we're just looking to make sure that it's headed in the right direction. We're gonna make any edits that are needed. Like we're just going to, we're usually going to hop on a call and we're going to talk line by line through the copy um, about the idea, about the presentation, about all of that stuff. And then I'm going to go back with that. I'm going to make any edits that are necessary. And then I'm going to draft the sales letters pitch. And the, the pitch, like I, I distinguish this in my head, the pitch is not actually the offer for the product. The pitch is how do you get someone to buy into this idea such that they are predisposed to taking whatever solution you're going to provide to them. So this is where you, you've you gotten their attention, you, you stimulate their interest and their desire to get them like, oh, I want, you know, the solution that this person offers. I want this positive outcome that this person is promising. And we do this by supporting and expanding on the big idea in a way that's compelling and believable. And you just want to keep going on, on building up the promise and the proof, the promise and the proof. You want someone to uh, number one, believe that there's this big promise that they can achieve. And well, to, to number one, have this big promise laid out there that, that is something that they can achieve. And number two, do everything you can within the context of, you know, the truth 
to make it as believable as possible. And this is usually about half the promo. So if the promo is gonna end up being 8,000 words, it's gonna be the first you know, 3,500 to 5,000 uh, words that are this pitch section. And then usually I get to the end of the pitch and I really feel like, okay, I presented my big idea, I backed it up in whatever ways were necessary. And now it's time to tie the entire big idea and this like this, this unfulfilled desire or this problem that they want to have solved into my product or service. And, and that's when we draft the sales letters offer. And for me, like this is always pretty straightforward. So I could have spent, I could have spent a couple of weeks on research or uh, maybe not always a couple of weeks. I'm just thinking in the context of, you know, if I'm not working on it full time. Um, so I'm, I might spend eight, 12, 16 hours on research. And then in a couple hours, I might draft the big idea, maybe another couple hours to outline the pitch. And then there's gonna be some editing, all of that. And then the pitch is gonna be the major section of what I'm working on. And that could be another eight, 12, 16 hours or longer. Um, but but it's, it, it is this big process, right? To, to get all of that stuff right. And then when it comes to the offer section, it's just like boom, 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 boom. It's, it's super fast, it's straightforward. And there's, you know, like the typical offer that I write probably has about 10 steps. And over the course of those steps, I'm gonna introduce the product, I'm gonna make the offer, I'm going to make the guarantee, I'm gonna offer any bonuses, I'm gonna do the call to action, I'm gonna do all the things that are necessary to take this interest that someone has, this, this desire that someone has for the positive that I'm promising, and get them to actually say, okay, I can tie this to a product that I want to take action and purchase. And then I'm gonna send that copy to the client. So at this point, I've basically written the full sales letter. We're gonna do a copy review. We're gonna do a line by line review of like starting at the top, going all the way to the bottom, discuss any big or small changes. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's a process. It really is a process. And if you're working with a good client, a good copy chief, I also offer this service to people who don't necessarily have this available. But, but you're gonna realize that it's a pretty in-depth process to go through and edit an entire piece of copy. And sometimes there can be some rather significant rewrites, definitely been there. And sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's much smoother sailing. Maybe there's some tweaks. And then you want to edit the full sales letter copy. Uh, this is step eight, we're editing the full sales letter copy. And sometimes like there are significant changes, like I said, uh, sometimes it's a lot of smaller tweaks, but really what you're trying to do is get, get the, the rough draft, which honestly, if, if I go back, if I go back and, and, um, and, and I say like edit the full sales letter copy at this point because there is this distinctive step after you've done the review where you are doing a specific edit. But if I go back, when I'm writing copy, I am constantly going back up to the top of the copy. I'm having my computer read it to me. I'm like, does this make sense? As I'm listening to it, is it is it compelling? Is it conveying the message that I want to convey? Is it as clear as possible? Is it presented in a simple way that's that's easy to understand? All of that. Like I'm doing edits like that constantly, but then there's this whole separate step at the end where it is, okay, I may have believed in my first presentation of it, but the client had some issues and so maybe some sections need to be changed or removed or whatever, right? And it's just doing the edits based on working with the client in a collaborative process, working with the copy chief in a collaborative process such that in the end we have a, a piece of copy that both of us or that everybody involved has confidence in. And then because usually a sales letter doesn't exist in a vacuum and isolation, there's all sorts of supporting copy that we discovered in that, uh, in that process at the beginning where we did the uh, copywriter client onboarding. And so step nine is draft the supporting copy. So order forms, et cetera. It was discussed during onboarding. Um, you know, there's, there's, I'll have a whole list usually. There's order forms, there's emails, there's ad copy, there's all of these other elements that are the supporting copy. And hey, you just got to sit down and crank those out. <laughs> and then we get to step 10, which is supporting copy review and edit. So we send all that other copy to the client. And usually, usually, like part of the reason I save it till till this 
point is because there's so much that I've learned through the process about the right message and all of that, that usually by the time we've sent this to the client, there's not a lot of changes that are required, but we'll go through and we'll do a review and edit as needed. A lot of times this doesn't even require a call. They'll just send it back with some margin notes, et cetera, but we'll go from there. And then assuming that you know everything else we've gotten up to this point we go through the sales letter uh you know we have we have the fully edited sales letter we have the fully edited supporting copy then it all goes into production and by, by the way um in a lot of cases my copy also goes through compliance that's usually another round of edits after the client feels like okay this is pretty much ready to send and so there are there's a compliance review and you get notes on that and there's also some edits that have to take place. It's, it is what it is, but um, it is part of the process. So that can be included here. I mentally just kind of loop it into the client review and edits um, or, or lump it into that. So uh, step 11, again, is sales letter production and launch. This is where you turn the copy drafts into, mar uh, into marketing that's actually ready for the market. And so this, I mean, this can look uh, like a lot of different things in the context of the freelance copywriter relationship. For most of my clients, I haven't done any of this work. They have a production team or designer that actually takes the copy and gets it ready to be sent out into the market. Um, and so this may not be your job, but as the copywriter, it is your job to make sure that you work with those people and give them good direction for how to translate your copy into the final product that as you want it to appear. And so I'll include design notes, I'll include production notes if it's a video, like all sorts of stuff. And then there is usually a little bit of a back and forth there where I get to see early drafts of it and I get to provide feedback on that, etc. It's all part of the production process. And then you launch, however the client launches it. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it can be an email campaign, it can be whatever, however the client is launching it, you launch, right? And then, and then you're gonna realize, meh, it worked really well, it didn't work as well as we wanted, it worked okay, but maybe it could work better. And so you get to step 12, sales letter optimization. Um, so after launch, you ask, did it meet the performance benchmarks that we had for this? Do we need new test versions of this? Do we need to try a new lead, try a new big idea, try a new uh, angle on this, try a new offer, try a new, like uh, you can actually break down the different stats in the context of your marketing campaign or funnel and you can say, and I even have training on that in BTMS Insiders, but you can say like, okay, you know, what elements of this worked like we wanted it to work, what elements didn't, and how can we then take that knowledge back to the drawing board and improve what we have, and then take the marketing back out into the market and see what new response it gets. And so that's the 12 step process. I mean, <laughs> It's fairly straightforward, and I know I didn't like share my screen as I wrote an entire sales letter, uh, but but this is the process that you go through every time that you write a sales letter for a client. Obviously, some things can look a little bit different if you're just writing for your own business, um, and there are a lot of details that I don't have time to cover in a daily episode like this that are inside the High Velocity Copywriting Program. So check the link in the description to the High Velocity Copywriting Program, as well as I'll include links to the Copywriter Client Onboarding and the Proof Credibility and believability training. Those are all part of BTMS Insiders where you pay one low monthly fee, you get instant and unlimited streaming access to everything to just log in, watch it, stream it, binge it, whatever you want, go through all that training and get all the benefit. And um, just you get access to it for as long as you remain a member. Also, if you do have a question you'd like to have answered in an upcoming episode, the link is in the description for that as well. I'm Roy Fur. This is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Every day and every episode, I'm here trying to help you increase your marketing genius. And just understanding this process that you go through as you crank out sales letters for clients or for your own business, well, it can help you manifest your genius in, uh, in rather magnificent ways. So I'll catch you again in the next episode. See you soon. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.